So I, uh, I made a pledge this weekend that I would speak from the heart. So here we go. Just over three years ago, I invented adventure therapy. <laughs> job and I'm a huge nerd so it fit really well, but when I took stock of my life I realized that I was waiting most of the time for 5 p.m. in the weekends when I can go and do what I really loved, which was climb. After moving to Maryland, I, uh, I ended up getting a job at a gym in addition to my full-time job at Goddard just so I could have a free membership. And before long I was spending my weekends at places like the Gogs and Seneca Rocks. <sighs> That's awesome. <laughs> um, I had taken a gym to crowd class in college and I, I was hooked. In the local climbing community, I found an experience that was so vastly different than what I found as a woman in science. I was never made to feel lesser than. And as my skill grew, so did my confidence. I was finding friends and mentors. When this part of my life reached a critical mass, I started looking for ways to make it more than just my hobby. I wanted to make it my career. So I started Googling. Clearly, that's what you do. And I was searching terms like uh, climbing, outdoors, transformation, change, and adventure. And gradually, I began to realize that I wasn't the only one who realized that climbing was awesome and that there was even this thing called adventure therapy. <laughs> I was relieved. And that spring, I enrolled in the Prescott College Adventure Therapy Program. I'm in my final semester, and if all goes well, I graduate in December. <laughs> Not surprisingly, as a nerd and a climber, the thing that grabbed me the most in my studies was what we are learning about the mind-body connection how new discoveries in neurobiology are blowing wide open how we think about mental health and opening up whole new worlds of experiential interventions. So there's been a lot of research that suggests that trauma, an experience that fundamentally changes the way our brain works, is really at the root of many common mental health issues. In the brain, the limbic system can get stuck in a state of high alert, which influences our perception of daily life, as well as the way our bodies function. Now, traumatic experience doesn't have to be life or death to make an impact. In this country, over 70% of adults will experience a traumatic event, and 20% of those will go on to develop the symptoms of that trauma. Even more eye-opening, over 80% of youth in the juvenile legal system have experienced a traumatic level of violence, poverty, or neglect. What that means? is that no matter who we are, who we work with, where we work, there is somebody with us who has been deeply affected by trauma. So how does this apply to my passion for climbing? Well, I've spent the last year trying to figure out what it means to be a trauma-informed climber. Uh, there are some key characteristics that stand out to me in trauma-informed care. Safety, empowerment, collaboration, choice, and control. So most of my climbing training comes from the guide world, where the goal is to get out there and to climb just a little more, get as much time on the rock as possible, push harder, faster, go just a little higher. Who here has heard Challenge by Choice? Sadly, for a survivor of trauma, the only choice may be to push higher and harder and faster than they actually want to, just because they've been told to. But what we, this is not authentic choice. And what we know now is that trauma takes more away more than our ability to say no with confidence. It changes how we view ourselves, how we view the way the world works, and how we feel in our bodies. Now, it leaves us physically and emotionally shaken. Amazingly, with some really small changes, we can make a big difference in how we teach and facilitate climbing that will make a big impact to those dealing with the effects of trauma. For example, the language, we can make it more invitational. When you're ready, sit back in your harness. 
We can learn to immediately respect requests like, I want to come down now. And we can downplay the often deceptive accomplishment of making it to the top by adding mindfulness to the movement. We can change a rope or harness from an, it, from an implement of abuse into a trusted friend and protector. My goal is to work full time with people of all ages using climbing as a way to regain a sense of safety, control, confidence, and a voice. To use what I know about the brain to affect change in the mind and the body. And to give other people the gifts that I got while on the rock, surrounded by a supportive community and the most beautiful views I'd ever seen. You see, when I first started climbing, I was the shaken one. It's a long story, but I moved to Maryland to escape my own trauma. And when I first got there, I was literally without safety, without security, a voice, or control. And route after route, move after move, adventure after adventure, I moved back into my life, back into my body, and woke up my soul. I didn't know it at the time, but what I was doing was trauma-informed climbing, and it saved me. So what I want to leave you with today is a challenge. Small changes can make a big impact. Whether you're looking to become more trauma-informed in your work, or trying to find a way to live your passion, small changes can have a big impact. It's not about pushing higher, harder, or faster. It's about learning to listen to and love your authentic self. Small changes can have a big impact. Thank you. Yeah.